Okay, guys. Uh, here we go again. And uh, we had to restart again. I'm sorry. But uh, this is Grace, Spirit of Truth. And today, we're on number 18. And I wanted to first uh, share with you uh, a little bit about water baptism before we start. I had a question yesterday about, well, if I've had the Holy Spirit, do I need the water baptism? Or likewise, if we had the baptism of water, do I need the Holy Spirit? Yes to both. You do need that. Okay, if you only had the water baptism, you definitely need the Holy Spirit. That is a must. It has to be done. Okay, that's what seals you. Okay, that's what brings you into these promises. That's what causes the old life to die and the new one to start walking. Until Christ be formed in you, the hope of glory. If you've had the Holy Spirit given to you, of course you need the water baptism. It is also a part. Okay, so just to answer that, you need them both. Okay, and if you cannot find a pastor anywhere that's willing to do that, then try to find somebody that's been in the fellowship and that's been established, maybe a deacon, an elder, that's been there for a long while. You know, somebody's established, not a new beginner, okay, but somebody's established, you know them by their fruit, that they're good people, that they're living in accordance with the Lord's word and their 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 fruits follow them okay they see you can see in them that yes they are definitely uh, brothers and sisters in Christ well then if they're willing to do that for you you can do it anywhere any body of water a pool okay that's right a pool a bathtub I dedicated my children in the bathtub okay so um, yes, you do need them both. Okay, and I just wanted to, to state that so you guys would know that. Another thing before we start, if you don't mind, guys, you got to get working on those pantries. Looking around and on the news and some of these programs on YouTube, I'm telling you, you need to get started working on those pantries. You need at least three to six months minimum. I do believe something's going to happen with the food stamps or the entitlements, and there's about over a hundred million that are on some form of, of uh, assistance and guys I'm one of them and I'm just not going to have medicine anymore I'm just going to leave in the Lord's hands and um, we need to get the pantries going truly take a, it doesn't take much guys uh, go get a bag of rice every month extra put it away uh, instant rice uh, go get some beans start loading up beans good source of protein nuts anything like that canned meat is going to be extremely valuable I advise you to get as much of that as you can the soups the chunky soups the the beef stews they have everything you need in one can okay load up on that toilet paper guys I'm, I'm not kidding okay look at Venezuela has anybody tuned in to Venezuela France Greece a lot of these economies are having problems, severe problems, and it's only a matter of time. Canada just recently. So if I were you guys, and because I love you, I want you to know this, you need to get out there and start stacking up. You don't have to do a whole lot in one month, but I do say that in my heart, I do believe that it is coming. I do believe at the end of 2016, and we're in it, and not too far from the end, or at the very onset of 2017 there's going to be some situations going on and uh, start going to YouTube I want you guys to start looking at the FEMA camps all you have to do is type in Walmart FEMA I'm telling you this is really coming uh, type in food shortages okay a lot of droughts things are going to go up I want to just Put this out there before we start every time any country has ever had a situation now 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 hear me on this okay and I know you guys are, uh, know this every time a country's had any situation with either drought famines uh, uh, food shortages hunger okay the US used to always be there doing airdrops do you remember this I don't ever remember a time not too often that the U.S. was not there to help with food. 
Now, isn't it really interesting that with Venezuela, Venezuela literally starving to death, there was just recently 100,000 that went over the border to Colombia or something like that to get some food. And yet the U.S. is silent. Didn't offer any food. You think maybe it's because of the oil they have? Resources maybe the U.S. like to get a hold of? Not just the U.S., I'm sure there's others. Just putting it out there. And isn't it strange that we have all these underground bunkers and stuff being built lately? There are literal cities underneath your feet. Those strange humming so noises that people hear in their neighborhoods, they can't figure it out. Could it be one of those tunnel making machines maybe, perhaps? Just putting it out there. I think people ought to really consider it. But I digress. Okay. Let's turn to Galatians today. And I want to start with Galatians because we did Ephesians yesterday. Should have did Galatians first. Now, what my purpose is, is every time we come across a book, I'm just going to pick one out randomly. And my, my goal is I need to share with you the grace of God. I need that you know whoever you are. And post this everywhere you can, guys. That the Lord's Word is telling you, really, that it's not a song. Although you could sing about Him. It. It's not an excuse or a cloak and it's not something we can claim when we're having a bad day it's the way to get out of that bad day grace of God chapter 1 letter of Paul to the Galatians verse 1 Paul an apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus the Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus the Christ and God the Father. What is it that, that Jesus went up? What he sent down? The Holy Spirit. And what's this mean? Both the Father, he said, and the Son will dwell in him. His office was not a men, neither was it by a man, neither was he taught it by men. But the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, which is Christ and God, was given to the Apostle Paul. He was told what his office was. He's an Apostle to the Gentiles. Okay, verse 3. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to you. And peace, spirit and peace, spirit and truth, all the one, Jesus the Christ, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, chapter 1. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Into the grace of God, into the Spirit of God. Have you begun such things in the Spirit, and now do you think you're made perfect by the deeds of the flesh? That was the law. So when you're receiving the Holy Spirit, you are actually being changed day by day by the very same glory that changed Paul and every other Christian. We are less like the world. We become, we become more like the Lord. Okay? And through much tribulation, I might add. Number 12, verse 12, chapter 1. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus the Christ. So I neither had received it, the revelations, nor was I taught it, not from a doctrine of, of some school somewhere, and neither by Gamaliel, which Paul was taught of at his feet, but by the revelation, you know, pop, the light went off. The Lord showed something, revealed. Revelation revealed something. 
Remember uh, the apostle uh, Peter, thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Blessed are you, Simon Peter. For it wasn't flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And upon this rock, in other words, the revelation, I will build my church. The Holy Spirit. Verse 15, chapter 1. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. By his what? By his grace? By his spirit. God is a spirit. Okay. Called by his spirit. 16. To reveal his son in me. To reveal his son in me. That I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Not with flesh and blood. Immediately. Revelation. The Lord Jesus explained to him. Revealed his son in him. Okay. Verse 24. And they glorified God in me. And where? In me. He went up. He sent down. Chapter 2, verse 8. We're going to go to verse 8, verse 9, and I'll read the whole thing here. For he that worked or wrought worked effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision. In other words, the Lord God who was in Peter, the Holy Spirit, that was teaching Peter how to preach to the, the Jewish nation. That's what Peter's uh, call was. He did not go to Rome. He was the apostle to the Jews. Okay? The same was mighty in me. This is the apostle Paul speaking. In me. Toward the Gentiles. Paul was given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the call of the Lord God. Remember? Bright light. Jesus talked to him. He's an apostle to the Gentiles. And when James. Cephas. And John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace, the grace, the spirit that was given unto me. The grace that was given unto me. The spirit that was given unto me. That we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Grace. Spirit. Let's go to 16, number, chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. You can't be given the gift of righteousness and you can't earn it through doing the things of the law. God had already said that. He says no flesh will be justified. And when, when the Lord said justified, he meant no one's going to be made righteous by doing this. But by the faith of Jesus. Guys, we have to understand, and for a long time, guys, you know, it's right there, but even I wrestled. Jesus took, and praise his name, he took all of our sins, everybody that was ever going to be known, every deed, put it on that cross. It wasn't an excuse to do anything bad, but he took it all away. We're supposed to walk in that. And when he gives us the Holy Spirit, it's to cause us to walk in that even more. So we know that we're not saved by things that we did, but it was something he did. And most of us can relate to what I'm going to say now. I am the least of the less. So I know that if he saved me, and he did, I wouldn't be up here right now. And he saved you. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of the Lord. Okay, by the faith of Christ. By the faith. We might be made righteous by that faith. That self-same faith that Abraham believed when God said, Stand before me and be perfect. And guys, I've always said it before. Do you think when the Lord God Almighty said to Abraham, Stand before me and be perfect, that Abraham doubted? He didn't. That's why he's the father of many nations. 
Abraham rejoiced to see my day, saith the Lord, and he saw it and was glad. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified by doing, even if he kept it. And there were those that did. Paul did. And Paul said, I count it all but done. Because you couldn't obtain the very thing you were seeking for. The only way that can happen is Jesus gives it to you. He just gives it to you. That's the beginning of faith. First, we have to believe that he is. That he's a rewarder. All right. Can you remember this for me? He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And that's my hope too. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto the Lord God. I am dead to the law that I might live unto God. Now, I told you this before, but it, it bears repeating. People say, well, that means there is no laws. You don't have to worry about anything. No, that's not what it meant. I'm dead to the law. But I'm alive unto Jesus. And Jesus said, do these things if you love me. First he saves. And he said, if you love me, you'll do these things. And what I'm asking you to do, the Lord says, is not that grievous. Come on. We obey man's laws. We all know better than to go into the bank and shortchange them on a deposit. And say that, or take something that isn't ours. We just know instinctively not to do that, right? instinctively when the Lord is given as a gift to the person receiving we instinctively know we don't do this and we don't do that I am crucified with Christ nonetheless I live yet not I but Jesus lives in me Christ lives in me I am crucified with Christ guys that pretty much means we as an individual have to in our own heart say look I'm dead to the world the things I used to do I don't want to do no more things I used to watch I don't want to watch no more you understand yet I live yet not I but who lives in you Christ I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And then on 21, verse 21, chapter 2. I do not frustrate, now listen to this. I do not frustrate the grace of God, the Spirit of God. I do not frustrate the Spirit of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Jesus died in vain. What is it? What was it they were seeking? If righteousness came by the law, if you could if you could obtain the very thing that most of us are trying to receive fully, and it ain't gonna be full until he comes to those clouds. What's in part will be made full. If we could obtain it by doing a group of things, then Jesus would have never had to come, right? That's what the Jews were seeking. They wanted that righteousness. They went about to try to earn it themselves and you can't. So, if righteousness came by the law, then Jesus would have died in vain. It doesn't come by the law. It's a simple statement, but it's very powerful. It came by way of Christ himself. He gives it to us as a gift. And let me tell you something. Some of you are going through some battles right now, and I know those battles, guys. But once you are known of the Lord God, and we are, when you profess with your mouth His name, He professes before the angels your name. When you tell them about Him, He's professing you. Don't hold back. You are sealed. You are sanctified. You are glorified in Christ already known. Don't let nobody tell you you're not. 
chapter 3, verse 2. This only what I have learned of you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Look, the Spirit of, of holiness did not come by the law. Did you receive it by the law or the hearing of faith? Okay? We asked the Lord. He came down by way of the Holy Ghost. Number 3, chapter 3. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? You know that ain't going to happen by the flesh. Have you, have you, are you so foolish that the Lord, the Lord is saying, I cannot believe you're so far removed already, having begun in the Spirit through the Holy Ghost. Are you now made perfect by doing the law? In other words, the flesh meaning... Are you trying to obtain something that you cannot obtain on your own? It ain't going to happen, guys. It's a gift first, and we walk out the love after. I really believe that. I really, really believe that. You're given the gift first. An undeserved gift. And then because we love Him for doing that for us, that if you love me, if you're my friend, if you're my brother, my sister, my mom, then you're going to do these things I've asked you to do. And if you are, you're showing me you remember me until the day I come back. Break. Break. Number five. Verse five. He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? What individual under the law do you remember offhand that could do the miracles? Raise the dead, open the eyes of the blind, the ears of the deaf, leprosy God, prophesy, apostles, not by the, not by the works of the law, not by flesh, but only through the Spirit. The Spirit dwells in us. First, God gave Jesus without measure the Holy Spirit. First born. Then when He went up, He sent down. He says, the things you've seen that I have done, you can do too. And maybe even greater things. Well, He said greater things than these. Remember Paul? Just walking by someplace with the shadow people, you know. So, So we know that the Holy Spirit gives the gifts of the Spirit. These are the things that Jesus gives to every single person. 6, verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, he believed Him. Abraham believed God when he says, Stand before me and be perfect. What's God saying to you? He's saying, believe me when I tell you I can help you. Seven. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. Abraham believed, therefore he received. Okay? So whatever your name is, Sharon, Mike, Bruce, Bruce believed, therefore he'll receive. Believe first that you can receive it, Believe first that he is, and then ask. Anyone that knocks at his door and asks, he says, the Lord hears. Number eight. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Now the heathen, we all know who they are. They're the Gentiles. They're not the Jewish nation. We are the ones grafted in to an olive tree. We're not the natural branches, but we get to partake of that olive tree through faith. Nine. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So if you're a believer and you believe the promise, you're already blessed. Ten. For as many as are of the works of the law, they're under the curse. See, you can't earn righteousness, okay? For it is written, Curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And yet, 
the Bible goes on to say, but that no man, this is 11th, but that no man is justified, in other words, made perfect by the law, in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. You have to believe he gave you the gift, guys. It's not called self-righteousness. It's called gift of righteousness, which is, I know that people like to say it, but no. Gift of righteousness through faith and you want to shorten it a little bit, doing the right thing. Eleven. No, actually you're on twelve. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. The law is not of faith. Can't earn it. It has to be by grace. In other words, the Lord. You can't receive it unless it is. So you guys out there that might be getting persecuted by things you just don't understand. Things that maybe uh, say your name. You don't know somebody in the house. Uh, uh, one of the kids. And said, nope, ain't us. It's not a ghost. It's because this very message, guys, is so valuable. It is life. Guys... I'm sharing this with you because it is the Word of God. And I know shortly I'm going to be leaving. And I'm going to be going to India for seven years. And I'm going to do my best to get this out. Pass it along. Now listen up. Twelve, oh no, let's go to fourteen, chapter three still. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus to Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Come on. Guys, how clear is this? Really? I wish I was a, I wish I was a pastor before a congregation right now. I'd have had a blast with these things. Uh, but unfortunately, that isn't going to be. But the Lord says not to worry. I give you the Holy Spirit so... He teaches, and that's why you're learning, and I'm learning. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, that's everybody other than a Jewish person, through Jesus the Christ, he went up, he sent down, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, through faith. By faith, you know the sun's going to come up the next day. By faith, you know that you're going to be eating breakfast, dinner, and lunch. By faith, you know something's going to be. Sometimes by faith, we're going to do this no matter what before we die. And when it comes, that's because of your faith. By faith, we know that Jesus came to this world as a man. By faith, we know he was born under the law. He had to be. By faith, by a woman. By faith, he walked out a Jewish young man up to an adulthood life without sin. By faith. By faith, he knew what he had to do. By faith, he was strengthened by the angels. By faith, God himself said, I have already glorified thee. By faith, he knew he was going to climb on that cross for every single person ever to the very end. By faith, he took every single sin of every single person. By faith, he went up because the Father lifted him up. By faith, he sent down. And by faith, he's going to lift you up. Without faith, you can't please God. But with it, you can take that little tiny mustard seed he said and move a mountain. By faith. Eighteen. Verse 18, chapter 3. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave to Abraham by promise again. Just a re... A reconfirmation of the same promise. 
if it was the law and this is very very clear here guys it says if the inheritance that is righteousness be of the law you could not earn it through the law if the inheritance of righteousness was through the law that's what it means it's no more a promise okay but God gave it to Abraham by promise we receive it because Jesus promised it you're sealed and don't let anything doing this tell you you ain't okay you're sealed and you know what if your heart condemns you you know what God is greater than your heart he will protect you that includes you Sharon Wherefore then serveth the law? This is on 19. It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now Jesus is our mediator. The seed is faith. The deposit is the Holy Ghost. The world is dead unto us, that we might live unto who? Unto him. By faith. Verse 21, chapter 3. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly, verily means truly, truly righteousness should have been by the law. How, how, how clear is this? Pastors, if any pastor is listening, guys, come on. And you know what, pastor? If you're a pastor, a reverend, a youth leader, a, a, a minister, an evangelist, look, we all are lively stones in Christ and we all have something to offer. I just want to share. And I really believe it is your job, pastor. You're the shepherds. Your job. To go before your flock mark every one of these and then you preach the gospel like you never preached it before and let the Lord put a smile on your face in your heart and over your soul he'll love you that much more because you humbled yourself okay this message is not mine okay it never has been I asked one day for the truth the Lord says here it is I'm running out of time in this country and the Lord says it's time to tell people about it. This is the only way I could do it. So pastors, come on. I've already gone through Ephesians and Galatians. There are so many. Get out there. Come on. I'm not saying that, that the, the tag sales and stuff to raise funds for the youth group is not necessary. I'm just saying that right now, in the world that you know we live in, but we're not part of this is the message you better be preaching truly this is the grace of God no he did not say we could go ahead and rejoice to be sinners we're supposed to be delivered from the things that we used to live in I know it took quite a bit for me I asked the Lord one day Lord God do whatever it takes to get me on that narrow way and I I could tell a story that no one would believe but friends where am I now? I'm talking to you because I don't want any anyone and I mean this ever to go through what I did ever so when I tell you from love that this is the message of the Lord you gotta believe me and I'm asking you to check the scriptures if it isn't what I'm telling you, then do whatever you do. But guys, John 1 8, pastors, that is not the answer. I found over 318, I don't know if it was the Old or New Testament alone. Then I asked the Lord to show me the New Testament too because they wouldn't believe me. And almost as many, a lot, hundreds. As you can see, this is the sixth chapter book and there's 49 references it's there those sheep that you look at every single day are looking back at you 
But you know what else is happening? I believe that the pages of our life are recorded somewhere. And I like to think that your latter end would be like mine, better than the former. Okay? I'm telling you, brother, because I love you. I'm telling you, sisters, it may be over the younger, because I care for you. You got to get this message out. This is the salvation story. Now listen up. I think we were on, um, yeah, if, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness should have been by the law. You're going to earn it through the law. It has to be given as a gift. You see, that's the thing. That used to mess me up a little bit. But see, it's complete opposite. That's what's so neat about this story. Jesus says, no, you're not working for this. Okay? The Jews tried to work for something that it was impossible to get anyway. But the Lord says, no, it's a gift. I'm giving you this first. And because when you receive it, you're so grateful in your heart, what did we usually do when, when dad and mom would give us something and we didn't deserve it? Right? But we're so grateful, we just wanted to please dad. Right? A brother of ours gave us something free and clear. First, you have to believe it. And I, I, I must confess, I had a hard time. But it's right here. And then after receiving it, you're so grateful. First time you feel that holy presence just rise up within your heart, flood your, your soul. You're so grateful. You want to do what you can. You want to help. You want to do the right thing. And if you don't know what the right thing is, go up and ask the Lord. Say, Lord, how would you like me to walk in my life? What is it I'm supposed to do? If you're having problems, uh, say, say for instance, you're one of those guys that just got to get thoughts out of your mind about women or whatever. My recommendation is because the Word of God renews your mind. Get a CD player. Get one that repeats. Put it in your ear, walk around a couple hours a day with it. That joy will be that much more better. Stay away from the things that you know might hurt. I've turned the TV off. I do not watch TV anymore. At all. I try to stick with YouTube, events, news, and scripture. Okay? Alright, so now let's go to 22. Chapter 3. But the scripture has concluded all under sin. Anybody in the law, guys, that the promise by faith of Jesus to Christ might be given to them that believe. Guys, again, right after. The promise of righteousness might be given to those that believe. If you don't believe that he can do it, then it won't happen. But if you believe that he'll give it to you, he will. Why do you think the world's spinning? I used to tell my daughter and my kids that until the last Christian has been saved, this world will spin. But the saddest thing about what's happening today is the bread that Jesus split around that table and passed that one loaf around now is so many they can't be counted. The original recipe is being lost. And I know pastors and, and brothers and sisters, you know what that means. There was a prophet one time in scripture, I cannot remember if it was Ezekiel or Jeremiah. It was, my heart's saying Ezekiel, but I'm not sure, you, you know, the Lord knows. But it was so bad back in that day, okay, that the Lord said to, I'm, let's just go with Ezekiel, okay, I, I hope I'm right, if I'm not, I ask forgiveness right up front. He says, the Lord says to him, I want you to take man's dung and mix it in with a loaf of bread make yourself a loaf of bread and I want you to eat it now I assure you that there were prophets back then that would have done it now this particular prophet said oh Lord you know nothing has ever went in my mouth like that and I didn't really want to start now I'm just putting that out there so the Lord God said okay 
use cow dung instead and he did it the point behind that was look what's happening to what I've given you to do and that was then the law what are you guys doing that's what he was saying this is what you're doing to it you're defiling it and you're taking what you're eating which isn't what I gave you and you're eating it you understand the very clear imagery of that today is the same message today the Lord made it very clear that not one dot not one comma is going to be erased from the law until everything was fulfilled now he made a new covenant with not just Israel but with the Gentiles it brought us both together this is what you do you've heard said that this is what you do now I'm telling you this is what you do he magnified the law he exalted it and it wasn't that grievous guys just behave okay but the bread he passed around the table was extremely important it was not just because he was passing bread around the table he wanted to make sure there was a message being taught the 7,000 the 5,000 that he fed the multitudes with that self same bread he used bread he blessed it he broke it he gave it to the disciples the disciples gave it to the crowds okay are we getting this now this is what he's saying is it gonna take another prophet to be risen up to exactly recreate that self same command to either Ezekiel or Jeremiah to get the point across gee pastors listen to what he's saying preach the word of God I went into a fellowship I could not believe it I do not remember seeing a Bible and this was in an assemblies of God guys I'm not gonna name the one I went to but I cannot believe I did not see I do not remember a Bible nor were we ever told to open one up that I can remember and they will look and seek for the Word of God and they will not be able to find it saith the Lord you think maybe we're heading into those days huh very sad don't you think the original church guys was not in big giant buildings or cathedrals they didn't have mortgages on them they were everyday folks they joined together what they had in common they shared okay and they did it with joy and I believe a lot of what's happening today in the fellowships is because they have all this overhead they have to do and so they're not telling these people what they really need to hear so what is YouTube YouTube is the average person trying to connect with another Christian the best way you can and I'm gonna give my best my best shot guys I'm an old guy now and I still got seven years to do in India keep me in prayer about that I'd really appreciate that I don't know how we're gonna get out of this country I recommend everybody now that I've got your attention we need to pray that the Lord God will have a limited exodus out of the United States something is not right here in the United States and it's going to get worse build those pantries okay and when the neighbor comes to you and they're they got a kid or something like that and if you can help that's why you need to build the pantries if you can help at all you bring them inside and you feed them as long as you can remember sometimes you're entertaining angels and you're not even aware of it 
It's not too late. But time is running out. Build those pantries. You need at least three to six months. The government is not going to help. The mark of the beast is coming. They slated December 31st for a reason in 2017. You think maybe there might be a situation before then? Look, I know that everybody wants to be a prophet. It just seems like every time you uh, ask somebody, what's your gift? Well, I'm a prophet. I asked for tongues when I first asked, asked the Lord for a gift. I asked him for tongues, guys. I did. I figured it was at least one, and I could get that. Well, prophet stood up one time and said something to the effect of, and he was an established prophet. His word came to pass. He said I was. He said to the congregation. Because I asked the, you know, the, the need the Lord, or here, Lord, I can't remember exactly. It's been so many years ago, guys. About three decades, almost. It says, you were here of the word of the Lord, and uh, I will cause you to know me. And it felt like it was for me, but it maybe felt like it was for everybody, right? Until, there's always an until. That night I went to bed. And now, I don't know where people go when the Lord wants to have you front and center. We have read about it in scriptures. But up until that time, I didn't know anybody who actually went up there or wherever up is. I wasn't here. I found myself in a big giant place. And the, the floor was like crystal. It was real dark in there. But it was like crystal. But light enough that you could see everything fine. I was on my hands and knees. And I wasn't getting up. Nor did I have any desire to get up. There was a huge ball of fire. I've never seen anything like it. And not since either. Never forgot it. Never. It was the biggest ball of fire I've ever seen. What? What's God? A consuming fire? And there were two little, look like asteroids burning or, or just, just balls of fire falling in front of it. And right out of the midst of that fire, my name was said, David, you're a prophet. And then I woke up. Felt great. Look, I'm David, the old guy. And the reason I tell you that is I can't possibly urge you enough to believe what I'm telling you. That's why I went to the scriptures. To show you. The Lord had told me that I'm not going to be in this country much longer. I am going to India. That's where I'm supposed to go. I'll be there for seven years. I'll be 65 when my mission ends. I don't know what about every other Christian. But I do know I love every everybody. I don't want anybody to get hurt. So. And I don't want anybody to go through what I went through. So the best way I can try to help is by getting in front of this little screen and trying to point out the promises and warn you about things that are going to start happening here. And they will start happening. I didn't choose to be a prophet, okay? I refer to them as uh, pastors or uh, preachers. But I always have to put a slash prophet because I, I don't want to make the Lord upset either because that's what he said I was. I am what I am. 
Not because I chose it, because the Lord God said, that's who you are. That's who I called you to be. And believe me, guys, when the Lord calls you, he'll gift you for the job. Now, I've always had that certain faith. The Lord isn't going to call you and not give you the equipment to do the job, right? Surgeons don't go into an operating room without the right tools, nor does a mechanic go under the hood of your car unless he has the right tools. The Lord will not send anyone unless they have the right tools. This might be, in fact, uh, the place where I'm training. I don't know. I do know when I tell you about spiritual attacks and stuff like that, it's because of this very message, I think. Uh, many Christians do not know this. And it's time that they do. Now, continuing on, I, I, I ask your forgiveness. 23, verse 3. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto, shut up until the faith which should at, afterwards be revealed. The law was there 430 years until the seed would come to whom it was meant to come to. We were kept under schoolmasters until the promise came that would cause us to do that out of love. First the promise, then you walk it out. Putting on the Lord, putting on Christ. Now, let's go to chapter 3 again. I'll read verse 27, 28, and 29, because they're all. For as many as for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put Christ on. Okay? Baptized in the Holy Spirit. He went up, he, he sent down for us. We're putting him on daily, okay? Daily. We're renewed day by day. We're going to go through tribulations, guys. I don't. I hope that you're not being told that we're kings and queens and that kind of stuff doesn't happen. Read the scriptures. Oh, it happens. And the Lord said in Revelation, which we will get to, we are going through those things. And because of the spiritual wickedness in high places today, you don't think that a Christian is going to stand out? Of course they are. Okay, now. So we put them on day by day. The Lord is formed in us day by day. 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all baptized into Christ. That's right. What does male and female both have that is the same? He quickened them. He breathed life into them. He gave back what he didn't take away. God breathed the life into you. We have a soul. And because of Jesus, he's the quickening spirit. He wakes it up. 29. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Remember, Abraham, father of faith, he was the first. He's not the last. Chapter 4, verse 5, 6. Okay? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might become, or we might receive the adoption of sons. Jesus set the captives free. At the time, they were under the law. Jesus went down to pay the price, but he also set some captives free, okay? And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son in your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. His spirit in us, we cry, Father, Abba. Help us. Cause us to walk in your ways, okay? 19, verse 19, chapter 4. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. The Holy Spirit comes in and Christ is lived out. He walks in us. 23. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. You can't do it by human hands. You can't do it by human means. You can't get a quick fix. 
But he of the free one was by promise. Look up, ask for the Lord to send down. 27. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate has many more children than she which has a husband. That means there are many more without than there are within. In other words, there are many more that do not have Jesus than there are that do. And this is why our job, guys, not just mine, as you're hearing it, it's your job too. We got to get this out. Chapter 5, verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you're circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. In other words, if you if you were under the law at that time and if you got circumcised, you're required to keep the law, but it ain't going to give you what you're after. Jesus says circumcise the heart. Circumcision is in the heart. And a spirit of grace, and we all know what it means now, will walk you through life and give you that new heart and that new mind saying the word of God verse 4 Christ has become of no effect unto you whosoever of you are justified by the law you're fallen from grace if you're trying to make yourself righteous through a group of things that you do in other words we're always talking about the Jewish nation but if you think well if I give this or I do that or I go to church every Sunday or I go to Bible studies if I want to do this and I do that that will save me not by works and what did the Lord say not by works of righteousness which you have done because in the Lord's sight let's be honest guys they're dirty rags but by his work that he did okay his work and because he did the work you receive the benefit of the Holy Ghost not by things you do For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Now, now, see now, there, there you go. But we, through the Holy Ghost, wait. We are walking every day and putting on Christ. The things of the world are dead to us. That doesn't mean that we're not tempted, prodded, poked, buffeted by things seen and unseen. You don't think Paul knew what he was talking about? Spiritual wickedness, spiritual. Key word there, guys, in high places. Of course he knew. And we keep going, Sharon. You get up in the morning, you go to that bathroom, shut the door, give thanks for the day, say, Lord Jesus, I appreciate it. Please, Lord, help me to walk in the right way every day. Help me to do the things I know I need to do and to share with those around me. Give me strength when people don't want to listen to me. And when they laugh, rejoice, Sharon, because the Spirit of God is resting upon you. They laughed at the apostles and the prophets and the disciples before you. You keep going. Don't let the enemy feed you anything. You keep the faith. Reach for a prize that he wants to give you. For me, I just want a hug. Really. I don't deserve anything else. But if the Lord is gracious enough to give me a hug. And you know the sister I told you about that visited in the hospital when I was sick? Well, it wasn't because I was sick, but because of what I was going to go through later on. Um, I like to think that maybe there might be a hug there. Because I really appreciated her and uh, being obedient to the Lord, coming down and helping out. There are ministering angels, guys. When the Lord thinks you need it, He'll send one. If you're going through any kind of agony right now, if you are under a spiritual attack, I mean hardcore spiritual attack, and you're just at your wit's end. You're afraid to tell somebody about it because they ain't going to believe you. You go up to a room or into a small place, shut that door behind you. You say, Lord Jesus, I have situations here, and 
I am trying so hard to deal with it. I cannot do this alone. Lord, help me out. Send a ministering angel to me to help me in these times of trouble. Guys, before I go any further, I would like everybody to bow their heads for a moment. I know this is a little unusual, but whoever whoever's listening. Lord God, I know there are people out there, Lord. And I know, Lord, there are a lot of people, Lord God, that are going through some things right now that they just can't understand. And I'm asking, Lord Jesus, that you would send ministering angels to them. Lord, ministering spirits from thy throne to help them out. I ask, Lord Jesus, for the power of the Holy Ghost to come over them, Lord, in such peace that they will know that they are not alone. And that the Father of all mercies is going to help them. Lord, you helped me. And I'm asking you, Lord God, to send to them, Lord, right now, Lord God, even as they're listening to this, Lord, so they know that for sure there is power in prayer. And I ask, Lord God, for everyone, Lord, that their eyes be illuminated, that they be open, that the tape be off their eyes, Lord, that they will see these promises themselves. And Lord, ask you in and forgiveness, Lord. I give you thanks, Lord. Amen. I just felt that that was necessary. And there are some out there that probably was needed. Okay, now look. Where did I leave off? Okay, chapter 5. Like I said, number 5. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness. We're waiting for what's in part. See, that always used to cross my heart. I didn't know what that really meant. And I thought it was because I was just, you know, having a, a battle with some things I don't want to go into right now. But the Lord said, no, it's in part. But then it'll be made full. Guys, We've only received a deposit. But it is more than enough to cause you to walk out the Lord's life. And whatever you're called to do, He'll reveal it to you. Ask. And at that day, if you're asleep, or if you're one of the ones awake, nobody knows when He's coming back. Not even Jesus. Praise God. Then the body, the flesh part, stays. And it'll be burned up with that fire that's going to take place. The spirit gets raised up by the Lord's spirit. Woof, up we go. And we're going to see him as he is. And those that are counted blessed, the Lord says worthy. But it's such a big blessing. We're going to see him not only as he is, but we're going to be likened, he said, unto the angels. That's why I refer to the angels as brothers or sisters. In case anybody wonders why I do that. All right. 16, verse uh, chapter 5. We're winding it up, guys. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. If you guys are battling something, ask the Lord to give you the strength within by his Holy Spirit. He would say, I'll call, dump it out. It almost killed me. If it's pain pills, I know it might be difficult to dump them out. Sleeping pills, some of them you gotta be careful of, they can cause hallucinations. Dump them out. But if you're battling with something, who's our helper? Who's our counselor? Who is the mighty God of Jacob? Who died on that cross? Ask him. No matter what it is, ask him. Just ask him. 18. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations. I don't know what emulations means, guys. I'm sorry. Wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, uh, revelings. And I'm not too sure about revelings either. And such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're having a trouble with any of those, 
ask the Lord to take it out by the root. You understand what I'm saying? And when that happens, yes, there's going to be temptations. All of a sudden, it's going to seem, where do these come from? Ask the Lord to give you strength. And when it's gone, make sure you give him thanks. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Fruit of the Spirit. Love. Joy. Peace. Which is my favorite. Long-suffering. Yes. Oh yeah. When you're going to... Now why would that be there, guys? Again, spiritual warfare. You might be under a spiritual attack. And I am the one that will believe you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you guys? Sharon? I'm the one that will believe you. Long suffering. It doesn't have to be just necessary people, guys. Being buffeted is also the same thing. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Another one of my favorites. I'm hoping to get much more. Temperance. Against such things there's no law. And it goes on to say, And they that are Jesus' have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. Let it go. If we live in the Spirit, this is verse 25, let us also walk in the Spirit. You know, one of the first things the Lord ever showed me was a vision. I was wide awake. And a very young guy. I saw some stuff. And I, I'm very grateful. Uh, there's some things I wish I hadn't seen. At the time, my wife and I weren't married yet. We were 10 years together. All of our children were already born and toddlers. But... I wanted to do the right thing so I had this we always had a calendar up and I was I would sleep in the boys room on a bottom bunk until we got married it didn't always was successful I ask forgiveness we are married now for 25 years I laid one night in a in a lower bunk bed if I can remember it right now I'm looking up and I'm praying as hard as I can guys truly Because there have been so many things that happened since I was a kid. And I believe when you have a call on your life, and this may have happened to you guys, you got a call on your life, and the enemy knows it. Hun, it's no different, or fellas, it's no different. When I say hun, I'm, I mean affectionately as a sister. Or I, I'm sorry. But gals and guys, brothers and sisters, okay. If you got a call on your life, this may in fact happen. Even since you're a kid then there's something you're meant to do. Take heart. Take joy. Because if it went out of its way to try to stop you, then you know the Lord has some big plans for you. Okay? Now, I want you guys to listen up for, for just a moment. I was laying in the bunk bed, separated from my wife, or now my wife, but then common law, I guess, 10 years ago. Looked up and I was praying and all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, an eyeball. A little bit bigger than normal. If I can remember it white, it was, it was white, lightning bolts going around it, and it was looking everywhere. You know, like... No, I'm not crazy. I was tested. And I would get these unctions, like little electrical sprouts, going up and down. Well, when it ended, I went immediately to tell the wife. And I asked the Lord, because the Lord, if this is uh, not my imagination, if it's you, would you please confirm it in the scripture? I turned to 32 verse 8 in Psalms. 
I will instruct you and teach you in a way that you will go. I will guide you with my eye. We all know, at least I do now, that the Lord has seven eyes, seven spirits of the Lord. And they go to and fro through the world looking for people that are hearts are perfect towards them. And believe me, I've had a lot of missteps along the way. And the fact that the Lord so loved me, and I know He does. But that's what happened. So guys, anything is troubling you? Anything. Fervently ask the Lord. He will address it for you. There will be an answer. He will make it known what to do. Okay? Now, let's go to 16. Oh no, let's go to 18. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, we went through those. And then the works of the Spirit, we went through those. And 24, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. It's a daily battle. But not an excuse. A daily battle. If you're having troubles and you need a, uh, a brother to talk to, or if you're a woman and you need a sister to talk to, seek out somebody who's been in the fellowship for a while, that's older, that's mature, that's established. Uh, brothers, seek a deacon. Or if you have an established prophet in the congregation, look to him. Make sure he's an established prophet. He's not a novice, not somebody just said he was, but that he's been there a while. And that when he says, thus say it, the Lord, it's coming to pass. Okay? Younger women, seek the older women. Okay? In the, because in the counsel of many, there's wisdom. Okay? Now, chapter 6, we're winding up now. Verse 6, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Now, that means, let him that is taught in the word communicate to the Holy Ghost, which teaches us in all good things. Okay? That's what it means. Verse 8, for he that sows to his flesh shall over the flesh reap corruption. We don't want that. Believe you me, we don't want that. I'm not the man I used to be. I think that a lot of you can say the same things, right? But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life ever, uh, everlasting. Return to your first love, okay? What's our first love? When you first met the Lord. So your candlestick isn't moved out of place. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, sometimes it takes a jolt, a severe spanking, that the Lord Father does in love to get our attention. Because if you're not overcome with these things, the Lord God's got it all in control. I'm telling you this truthfully. 15, chapter 6. For in Jesus we neither have circumcision, or excuse me, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature. In other words, uncircumcised or circumcised isn't going to do it. The Holy Spirit within you creates a new creature in Christ. That does it. Okay? 18. And lastly. Brothers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. It says it all right there. This is just in one small six chapter uh, book. About 49 references. And I'm hoping, guys, that you got something out of this. Listen, try to pass it along. And try to uh, talk to the Lord about it. If you need to get a highlighter, highlight every single one and use it. Believe it. Go to the Lord about it. Then go to your pastor and say, Look, Pastor, we respect you, we love you, 
And we know you have a lot of responsibility over us, but please, could you at least uh, open this up, read it? I've highlighted everything. This is the Spirit of the Lord. Not an excuse to do something. Come on, guys. Please. If, if, if we walk in the things of the world, they're never going to see any light. And you're supposed to be a lamp. So, I want you to shine, okay? And with that, uh, I can't get to the letter today because we're already over an hour. But this, read it. Has a lot of good stuff in it. And God bless you. Have a good day. Amen.